<laughs> well, Sooner fans, if you thought hearing that was painful to your ears, imagine hearing that song, Rocky Top, sung with a lot more spirit, more up-tempo, and for the most part with a band accompanying the song, and a lot more people singing it. That's right, over 105,000 packed Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee, which, by the way, will be the largest crowd the Sooners have ever played in front of in school history. Most of those 105,000 will be singing Rocky Top, and they will be singing it frequently, okay? Let me put it this way. There'll be more than just a six-pack singing the song, okay, which is what you saw earlier. Sooners and the Volunteers. Saturday night, 5 o'clock, two top 25 teams, and the game will be seen on ESP. And I want to emphasize 5 o'clock Central Time, 6 o'clock um, Knoxville, Tennessee time, because, of course, they're Eastern Time Zone. The line for this game, it's interesting because a week ago at this time, even though um, both OU and Tennessee had a game to play before their matchup this upcoming Saturday, the line was three points in favor of the Volunteers. That's right, three. There we go. However, the line has changed to where the Sooners are now the favorite. They're favored by one. It's, it's basically a pick em. That's how Vegas has this game. And they foresee a lot of points. Currently, I believe the over-under is at 61 and a half. So they think that both uh, Dobbs and Mayfield, two QBs, are going to have a good day. Now, if you're looking at last week from, from, from both teams, of course, both played teams from the uh, Mid-American Conference, the MAC, and both teams did some good things, but both have major concerns. I think one for, for the Sooners, obviously, rush offense. That's a big, big thing because after the first quarter, they didn't have any rushing net yards in the game, and then uh, for the game, they ended up with about 100, which is not exactly going to make Bob Stoops smile. But the thing about the Sooners was that even though the first quarter was not picture perfect, at least they were able to have offensive success. Most of it through the air. I thought Baker Mayfield played a really good game, solid start um, for the Sooner QB in his debut with Oklahoma as you know he threw for nearly 400 yards, and did so um, in barely over three quarters of work. Had a fantastic game, three TDs, and one on the ground. So for Mayfield, could have asked for more for the ground game. Um, it would have been difficult to ask for much less because, again, they, they struggled. And remember, you know, last year it was Tennessee that had the more inexperienced line of the two teams because the Volunteers – only had um, six combined starts amongst their uh, front five. Now, this year, the Sooners had three of their five down linemen, including both tackles, making their first start ever. Experience does matter. And again, you know, Akron, I know they're not a very good team, but at least their defense wasn't too shabby. A lot of experience on that zip defense, and it really showed in the early going because the Sooners, even against a base six or base seven defense, had a difficult time establishing any kind of a running game even though you have the speedster in Mixon and, of course, one of the leading rushers last year in P. Ryan. P. Ryan, you know, ended up with 33 yards on only 11 carries and a touchdown, a far cry from what he's used to. And maybe this style of offense, for the time being, uh, maybe it's going to take him some time to be that P. Ryan that we once saw. Now, now numbers-wise, that's not going to happen. Uh, this is not the type of offense, the air raid attack by Lincoln Riley, that's going to allow him to rush for 17 or 1,800 yards like he had a year ago. However... It is an offense where he can still be effective as long as the offensive line gives him creases, and there wasn't really a whole lot of creases on Saturday despite the win against Akron. Um, but we had the Sooners primarily through the passing game, got away from that rugged first quarter, and played a lot better. For Tennessee, looking at their game against a, a Mac opponent as well in Bowling Green, uh, their biggest concern has to be pass defense. Now, one thing that will help the Volunteers entering the Saturday 
is Todd Kelly Jr., you know, who really barely got even into the game. I mean, he wasn't really a factor, but this time he is, you know, going to play from start to finish, it would appear, and having him at safety will really help the Volunteers. But bottom line, though, Tennessee's pass defense was terrible, giving up way over 400 yards. And keep in mind, even though Tennessee won this game um, by about four touchdowns, it was 42-30. to 30. Tennessee held a mere 12-point lead late in the third quarter. They, they had to play well down the stretch to put that game away from a Bowling Green offense that could move the ball. So, you know, just like for Oklahoma, the rush offense is a concern. You could say it will be the same for the pass defense of the Volunteers because they were getting, you know, lit up. Now, for the Volunteers, um, the rush offense was a different story. They were fantastic um, with um, – a couple of running backs, you know, in Kamara, as well as in uh, Jalen Hurd, both had over 100 yards rushing. And by the way, Josh Dobbs, the quarterback, he was 12 yards away from a 100-yard day. So they nearly had three players in the century mark with rushing, just about. And for the game, 399 yards rushing, that'll do for an offense that had well over 600 yards. But the defense gave up, uh, you know, somewhere in the 530, 540 range as far as total O. So both teams know that they have at least one big problem to try to at least rectify before Saturday's game at uh, Neyland Stadium. Um, if you're looking at um, other areas uh, to analyze this game, remember um, last season, even though OU beat Tennessee 34-10, that was last year. Tennessee was a younger ball club. Also, too, you know, I kind of gave it away, but Tennessee does not have Justin Worley at quarterback. He got sacked five times and threw two picks um, at or near the goal line last year in Norman, and one of them got run 100 yards back for a touchdown. Um, the Sooners have a much tougher chore defensively. Yeah, they played well against Akron. I, I thought the front seven couldn't have played any better, but that was Akron. Not a very good offense from a team that averaged about 21 points per game last year, which the Zips did. Tennessee features more challenges, not just as far as the rush offense, but as far as pass offense as well. You might say, well, we didn't see a whole lot of the pass offense for Tennessee a week ago. Well, Tennessee really didn't have to have that because they were able to run, you know, crazy against the Bowling Green team. It was an absolute display that Tennessee put on the ground. So, you know, why would you need to have, you know, Dobbs throw a whole heck of a lot? Again, OU's defense played well last week, but the secondary you know, as far as the safeties goes, they were not really tested as Akron primarily ran the ball and they just didn't have the offensive weapons to compete with Oklahoma. So the Sooners, you could say the safety kind of had uh, kind of had a break on Saturday. They weren't tested, but that will be much, much different when, you know, the secondary players are going to face a challenge. You know, Zach Sanchez, he made a fantastic play on one play on terrific single covers down the sideline, breaking up a pass. But then we see him later that series, you know, read the quarterback too much, and the guy he was supposed to cover zipped right past him, and he got burned. So that was against Akron. So Sanchez, yeah, he's Mr. Opportunistic with six picks last year, but at times we've seen him blow coverages as well. So it's not just the safeties you have to worry about for Oklahoma in this game, and this will be one of the best offenses that they'll face all season long. Safeties, corners, they better be ready because Tennessee you know, will feature the likes of of some incredible receivers. I mean, guys that can absolutely, you know, burn you. Like Josh Malone, we'll talk about Vaughn Pearson, also Ethan Wolf, and uh, Juwan Jennings, a guy that Tennessee is really high upon. Don't be fooled because, you know, uh, Dobbs, the quarterback, he can throw the ball, and he's got a lot of weapons and an offensive line with a year more experience able to handle the challenge. That was the thing about the Sooners last year. They were able to, to pressure Justin Worley, but remember, Worley was not that mobile-type quarterback that you see from Dobbs. So Dobbs is more apt to try to get out of trouble when the pocket collapses. Uh, so for the Sooner defense, one of the big keys of this game, you know, you've got to get that outside pressure going like you did a year ago and force mistakes. You cannot just lay back and hope Tennessee makes a mistake. You have to force the action. So this is where Eric Stryker can really, really make an impact to start this 2015. And Dominic Alexander, who I thought was everywhere on the field in that first half, you know, throughout the whole game last week against Akron, he has an opportunity to make Tennessee make mistakes. That's going to be the big, big thing. Just don't play play conservative, okay? Don't hold anything back because this is one of those games that momentum-wise can take you a long way toward the rest of the season. So, talk about the secondary. Getting back to them real quick for the Sooners. Talk about the safeties. You know, Atari Bird. You know, Stephen Parker, they're really, really going to be under the microscope, okay? As well as uh, 
P.J. Bonsworth. Those guys got to be ready. And we're talking about the Sooner offense. Can they open holes? That's going to be the big, big thing. Can they open the holes for P. Ryan and for Mixon to do the job? That's the part we really don't know. And remember, you know, Tennessee's, you know, front four, you know, they're pretty darn good. In fact, their front seven can play. You know, Derek Barnett, Kurt, you know, Kurt Maggot. You know, we've seen Tennessee last year with at least two players in double figures with sacks. The Sooners pass offense, I'm not too worried about as far as pass protection because of how well they did a year ago, even though they've got two new tackles. The air raid attack is the type of offense where Mayfield doesn't need a whole lot of time to get rid of the ball. So for Mayfield, keep for him. Don't force anything, okay? Do not force anything at all, all right? If it's not there, it's not there. But the big thing for Mayfield is to play a smart game, and you're playing in front of a very loud environment. It's going to be well over 100,000 at Nebula Stadium. It is going to be a, an electric atmosphere Saturday night. So Mayfield and company, make sure they get their calls right. Make sure the crowd is not as big a part of this game as it could be, okay? And that's where that solid start must come through because last week against Akron, you know, they didn't have a good start, but thank goodness it was just Akron, and, and thank good it was, you know, thank goodness it was in Norman. You, know, you get up to a bad start in this one, as I mentioned in the post game against Akron. Uh, you get up to a bad start in this one, you're going to be playing catch up the entire way. You may not be able to come back because that crowd is going to be, to pardon a and it's going to be like a 12th man for the Volunteers. So you got to battle the environment, and for Mayfield, you know, play it smart. Don't do anything risky at all, and the Sooners' offense should have a good game. Now, my prediction for this ball game, as as we've talked about uh, the ground attack for Oklahoma, we've talked about Tennessee in terms of what they can do offensively. Um, my prediction for this game, look, I think OU is going to get a lot of points. Okay, I think Mayfield will have a good game. The ground game will do a little bit better this time. I just don't know if it's going to be enough. My concern is for that secondary of the Sooners against what will be a difficult offense for the Sooners to try to stop. And, again, the home field advantage is going to mean more than what people might think as far as this game goes. Neyland Stadium in Knoxville is one of those true special environments in college football. But for three, three and a half hours for me personally, I'm going to hate it because it is going to be the enemy. As much as I want to pick Oklahoma, this is one of those games before the season started when I made my predictions they were going to lose three games. This is going to be one of them, although it will be close. Tennessee right now looks like they have the more balanced offensive attack and the home field advantage that will obviously play a role in this game. So I'm going to go 35-31 Tennessee to win this game by four points. And may I be wrong, please, okay? May my prediction be wrong. If you're mad at me, if you're a Sooner fan because I picked Tennessee, hey, it's just my opinion. The Sooners, though, they got to have the ability to be able to run effectively and at the same time, you know, that, that defense, you know, they weren't tested last week. They're going to be tested this time. It's got to be proven to me that they don't have those brain lapses anymore and give up big plays. They didn't last week except for one, but again, that was against Akron. Tennessee is more balanced, more athletic, and offensively more dangerous. High scoring game. But I've got Tennessee winning it in a close one. My post-game show will be probably uh, Sunday morning. And, of course, don't forget my picks segments, my prediction segments. Uh, we will start that on Thursday where I'll pick a series of college football games against the spread. So long.